Today I'm going to show you how to recreate the synth patches from James Blake's Retrograde. We're going to use Zeta 2 to do it. Before we get started, I just want to quickly mention a piece of software that I made called Centorial. Now, Centorial is video game-like training software that will teach you how to program synth patches by ear. I designed it to give you the ability to do what I'm doing in this video, which is take the patches you hear in your head or in other songs and recreate them, just know how to make them. We do this by combining video demonstrations with interactive challenges in which you actually program a built-in soft synth. Uh, and there's about over 700 patches throughout the whole thing, almost 200 lessons. And we recently just added a special Zeta 2 lesson pack that adds 37 videos that go over every inch of Zeta 2. So if you'd like to try it out, there's a free demo, 22 lessons. Just click the link that's popping up on the video right now. And there's a special Zeta 2 version of the demo as well, and that's a link popping up now. And of course, both these links are in the description below the video. Anyway, let's get started. So, here's the beat. So before we get into the synths, the drums are real simple. It's just an 808 kick clap. Oh, let's start right here. I used battery, but you know, anything that's got 808 samples will work. I tweaked it a little bit. I pitched the kick up a bit and I pitched the clap down a bit, but that was just to match his track. Now let's get right to the lead because I'm sure that's what you're watching this video for. Now, I've had a lot of people write in and request a tutorial on this lead, and a lot of them describe it as polyphonic because they hear multiple notes, but it's not. It's monophonic. It's one voice. He's only hitting one key and holding it, but it's got multiple oscillators, and each of those oscillators has, is having their pitch manipulated from a different amount, which makes it sound like three voices turning into one. So let me show you how it works. Go up into here, initialize data two. So now I get no sound. And it's a saw wave. So we go to oscillator one, we still do a saw. Now they've got four saws here for you know vintage saws. I always go with one. It's got the fullest sound. I like it the most. Now, like I said, it's three oscillators. So we're gonna make oscillator two also a saw, oscillator three also a saw. Before I play a note, it's gonna be kind of loud. So let me turn it down over here. And back up a little bit. Let's go right about there. Now, it still sounds just like one oscillator, but I'm gonna detune the first one up a bit and you're gonna hear it start to thicken and start to kind of move a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the third oscillator and pitch that down about the same amount. So this is a very, very, very old trick. And you take the same exact waveforms and detune them from each other. You get a nice, thick, moving sound. So we've got our three oscillators, three saws, slightly detuned to give us this nice, moving, thick sound. Now we want to take an envelope and apply it to each oscillator. And we're going to use that to bend its pitch. So I'm going to take oscillator two and disable it as well as three. So we can just hear one for now. It's going to be easier to understand how these envelopes work when we're just looking at one. Mod matrix. Here's where we set up all of our modulation routings. So we want envelope one. We're going to route it to oscillator one's pitch. Now, almost always when I am modulating pitch in Zeta, I always go into curve and select one of these pitch curves. This simply just allows us to set amounts according to pitch amounts. So you know, octaves, whole tones, semitones. It helps us pick out specific notes in our modulation a little bit easier. I'm going to set it to one octave. I'm going to max out the range. So now we can use the envelope to go to as much as one octave now. So I'm going to go over to envelope one. And right now, you're not going to hear anything. No pitch movement. This envelope amount is at zero. That's why nothing's happening. I'm going to hold down a note. As I raise it, you're going to hear the note go up. And we want to raise it until we get to where we want that note to start. Because when he first hits that key, you hear one of the oscillators start higher and then move its way down. 
So I'm going to hold down until we get to that pitch. There we go. Now our envelope is currently at the top. It just holds a note up here. That's because our sustain level is maxed out. I'm going to take it all the way down. And now our note's going to start here and make its way down. Now it's a little fast, so we're going to increase our sustain time. This is a little confusing. Most of you would think of this as decay, which is pretty much what it is. But Zeta calls it sustain time. But you can think of this as decay and this as sustain. Now that's a better length, but if you notice at the very end, it shoots down really fast. But in retrograde, it really slows down near the end and they, you know, it's kind of almost sound out of tune for a bit. It's what creates all that tension. So we want to slow it down at the end by changing the curve right here. See now you see it goes down kind of fast and it slows here. So now we get this. You hear how it hangs out at the end for a while. Now overall it's a little too fast, so we're gonna bump it up to about here. And there you go. That's oscillator one. I'll turn that one off. Oscillator two, we want to do the same thing, but we want it to come from below and bend up. So we're gonna give it its own envelope. Envelope two with similar settings here. One octave, but this one's going to oscillator two's pitch. And we want the envelopes to be almost the same. What you can do in Zeta is right click, copy, and then right click, paste. And now two and one are the same. But we want to set a negative envelope amount because what this will do is instead of shooting the pitch up and then gradually coming down, it's going to shoot the pitch down and gradually come up. Even though it looks visually like it's going up and then back down, when we set it to negative amount, it does the opposite of what you see. So now we get this. If I went above, but I am going below. Okay. Now, the third oscillator is also going to come from below. Just, it's not going to start as low as the second oscillator. So, envelope three, maxed, pitch one octave, and oscillator three, pitch. And we're going to copy and paste the envelope. And we want a negative amount, just not quite as much. So let's bring it up to about here. And our third one is like this. Bring in the second in. Bring the first back in. And that's how you get that swarming bees bending pitch effect. Now we're not done yet. It's way too bright right now. We're gonna to need to filter it. So we're gonna route all three oscillators to filter one, just like that. And we're gonna do a low pass filter. Now that's way too dark. What the sound actually does is it starts kind of dark and as those pitches are bending in, it brightens up a little bit. So we're going to set our cutoff to the darkest point, how it starts, which is about here. And then we're going to use another envelope to brighten the cutoff to raise it up as the in that beginning part of the note. So envelope four, max this out, route it to filter one cutoff. And then... Just like we raise this amount to find the highest pitch with the oscillators, we're going to raise this amount to find the brightest cutoff that we want. And it's not much. It's about there. And now we use the attack to take us from cutoff to envelope amount. About 1.6 seconds. And... Now the sound is a little flat. It's not cutting forward as much as I'd like. So we're going to use a heavy amount of resonance and listen to what it does. About there. 
Makes it a little more aggressive, makes it push forward and kind of cut. This is great for leads and basses. Or for anything, really. Resonance can really make a, a patch go from flat and it can make it come alive just by pushing it out a little bit. And then if you listen carefully, the sound kind of fades in a little bit. It doesn't come in strong. So we go over to our amp envelope and just increase our uh, amp attack. And that'll kind of ease in right there. Now, one last thing. Every once in a while, you hear one of the oscillators bend down a whole step and come back up. It's like, na na. It does that every once in a while. So he triggers it whenever he wants. And so you'd want to use some kind of mod control with your hands. So maybe the pitch wheel or the mod wheel. But for this, I particularly like to use aftertouch. Now, for those of you who don't know, aftertouch pretty much comes standard on most synths and MIDI controllers now. And you know, usually when you play a note, you just hold the key down. But when a keyboard has aftertouch, you can push it even further. You have to give it a little more strength. And that further push going deeper into the key can trigger a modulation. You'll find it in this control column, channel aftertouch. And we want to modulate oscillator 2's pitch. Now, with Zeta 2, when you want to use one of these controls, you have to set source to on to enable this row. And this is going to determine just how far down that pitch is going to go. I'll come back to this amount in a second. Now, right now, by default, when I push this key down further, it would raise the pitch. But we don't want to do that. We want to lower it. So to reverse this sort of natural positive modulation, we go into linear and we go to unipolar linear minus. It sounds fancy, but really it just reverses the direction. Now, if I press the key further down, it's going to bend oscillator 2's pitch down. Listen, and let me disable these for a second. OK, that's normal press. Now, if I press further in, that's what it did. And I can press slowly in and then slowly out to do a kind of a slow bend. I particularly like it for this track because it sounds like it's struggling. And if you have to physically push into your keyboard, you kind of get that struggle feel into the sound. And by the way, the range will just determine how far down that pitch will bend when I push in the aftertouch. I just set it by ear. I just tweaked it until it sounded about right. So now we've got that set up. Let's bring these guys in. And now we've got our patch. Now here comes the aftertouch right here. So I pushed in and I slowly eased off the key. And here comes some more right here. I pushed in to bend it down and slowly let it up. Next, we'll do the bass and the sort of organ synth. By the way, you can download these patches for Zeta 2 and the MIDI file so you can see what notes I'm playing uh, just by clicking the link that's popping up on your screen now. And it'll take you to a special page with this video on Centorial's site. And there's a link underneath that you can click and download. And by the way, we've got a lot more of these tutorials and articles, free stuff on Centorial's site. When you go to that page, you'll see a newsletter sign up on the right side. Just give us your email and we'll send you a link to a page full of this stuff. So let's do the bass next. Solo it for a second. So just a super round sub E bass that's kind of moving and swirling. Let's open her up. Fairly simple patch. So let's initialize. And this is a saw. And at first I thought it was just a simple sub bass. So that's what I programmed first. Now it's kind of loud down in this range. So let me bring our master volume down a little bit. So there's our saw. Now, obviously, to get that round, subby sound, we use a low-pass filter. So we're going to route this to filter 1 and 24 dB, low-pass. And we're going to turn it pretty far down. In this case, it's going to go all the way down to 175. Right there. Now, if you really want to make these, you know, just give 
these sub basses some oomph, you can use resonance. Now I'm going to turn it up fairly high. Yeah. Resonance will just push out part of your sound. If you have the cutoff set right, it'll push out just the right part. And it really made this sub bass still sound nice and round and heavy, but it kind of pulled it out and pushed it, stopped it from being flat, just like it sort of unflattened the lead as well. Just makes it step forward in the mix a little bit. So this is what I originally programmed. But uh, if you listen to the track, you hear the volume kind of fluctuate. And you hear the bass sort of moving around. So I did a doubling and detuning. Uh, I'm going to copy, paste this, and we're going to detune them. We're going to do 16 up, 16 down. Let's actually listen to it as I do it. There we go. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, these are synced right now, and that's really important. When you double and detune sounds, uh, sorry, when you double and detune oscillators, you'll get a little point at the beginning of each sound, and uh, it gives it like a natural attack transient. Now, some synths, if you're doing this on a different synth, particularly analog synths or analog modeled synths, they don't have that. But with these digital synths, you can sync them, and that'll give you a point on double and detuned sounds. And that's what gives this bass a, uh, on the beginning of each note. That mm, is important. For example, if I switch to free, it unsyncs them and listen to it. The beginning of each note. Some have a point, some don't. It's very inconsistent. So this sync is very important. If you have this sort of option on whatever synth you're using, make sure it's on for this bass. So there's our bass. Let's bring other things back in. It's a huge sound. Lastly, we have this organ-like synth really filling out the middle. And that sounds like this. Initialize. This is going to use a combination of saw and medium pulse wave. But since we're playing a bunch of notes, I need to compensate by turning our volume down here. Otherwise, it's very loud. So, saw, oscillator one, oscillator two, we're going to go to a square wave. And we're going to use this control right here to narrow the pulse width. Now, here's our combined sound. Now we want to add some movement, thicken it up a little bit, because you know an organ-like tone has that. So we'll double and detune them. Not a lot, but a little bit. Now there's this attack on the sound that's kind of crisp, like k -k every time we hit a note. In this case, we don't really want that. This is meant to just fill out the middle of our track. We don't want that point sticking out. So, like I mentioned with the bass, when it's sync, when you've got double and detuned oscillators and you sync them, you get that point. So we're gonna take that off and let's see if that helps. It helped a little bit, but we're playing a bunch of notes of a very, very bright patch. So we're still going to get that crisp attack. So we're going to use an amp attack and just cut off the very beginning of the sound with a very, very quick amp attack. 0 0.04 seconds. So it won't, you won't actually even hear a swelling up of volume. It'll just cut off that front end. There we go.
Lastly, we want to throw on a flanger. So I'm going to go down to, let's see, mono flanger. And here's what we have by default. So it's not moving. The default speed's very slow. So we're going to increase the speed so you start to hear the flanging move up and down. And then feedback we can use to really accentuate the flanger sound. Next, we want this flanger to go deeper down. If we increase our delay, it'll kind of reach a deeper point. Listen. Very nice. And then lastly, our depth we can use to bring that high end down. Depth also can kind of bring the low end up a bit. It's kind of like LFO amount, if you're familiar with LFOs. And to be honest with you, depth and delay, I had to experiment a lot with. It's not always obvious what they're doing, but you can just think of them as a way of controlling the highest and lowest point of that flanger. And that'll help you kind of figure out how to set them. Now, this is way too wet. There's way too much flanging on this. So we're gonna bring our level down. a subtle flanger interesting thing about this patch if you listen it sounds like there's two layers it sounds like there's almost like a, a like a round body and a bright sizzly top so much so that i actually spent most of my time trying to make this patch with two patches one for the bottom one for the top and i succeeded and then as i was making this video i realized this might just be a wide open patch with no filter and it was much simpler than I thought it was. So one thing to keep in mind is always try the simplest solution first, or you can waste a lot of time trying to do something unnecessarily complex. So all together, we got, oh, let's take that loop off. Before we play the whole thing, I copied this first one pasted it so this is the exact same bending lead and then i have it come in later because if you hear when the chorus starts over because he repeats it a few times in a row you hear that bend lead come in again but the first one's still being held so that's what happens right here take a listen And that's it. Again, you can download the patches for Zeta 2 and the MIDI files so you can figure out what notes are playing. And uh, check out Centorial, 22 lessons free with the demo. All the links are in the description. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>